Welcome everyone to the first dialogue box, uh, the very first episode we have with us today, uh, Maine painter, Diana Young, who's been working in Maine for almost 50 years, and uh, we're so glad you could make it here today. Um, this is uh, the very first production of Blood Content Dialogue Box. Welcome, Diana Young. Hello to you. Hello. How are things up there in Maine? A beautiful day. I'm glad to hear it. We have a thunderstorm down here. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I've closed all the windows to make sure that our sound quality is uh, top notch. Okay. All right. So we're talking about three paintings today, um, and the first painting we're talking about is "Angry Day at Estee's Head," um, which uh, viewers can see on their screen right now. And uh, would you like to uh, start off and talk about your inspiration behind this painting? I certainly would. <clears throat> I had been inspired by a certain artist by the name of Yvonne Jacquette. And um, I envied her work, and I thought, okay, um, what is it that she has that I don't? And I thought, well, there are two things that I can put into my work that, um, that, that I would like to take from her. One was um, a large format in a square, and um, a, a high view looking down. And, okay. and, and so um, I was going to paint with a group of friends. And um, So this is, a, this, is a, this is a large canvas you, um, you're, you're using. This is the largest canvas that you can transport by car to your location? Uh, yes, yes. I, I, uh, her paintings were a lot larger than mine, but uh, forty by forty inches is what I settled on, and okay. um, because it's the largest painting I could fit in my VW, and um, so I had this canvas prepared, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do, and uh, my friends all settled on a a place to paint that morning, which was right in a lot of truck traffic by the dock, and the air quality was terrible, and uh, I just I couldn't stand sitting there. So I was angry because I didn't want to just interrupt the group to leave, and so, but finally I did. I went to a different place. This is in, in Eastport, Maine. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It's okay. Eastport. So I went to this park called Shackford Head and looked across the water at where they're building a new port, and I sketched all morning in brown ink on a large pad of paper and didn't like anything I was doing, and I was still cross. And finally, at the end of the morning, um, this little motorboat zipped across the, the bay, uh, leaving a wonderful wake, and uh, I just drew it. I followed followed it with my pen, so to speak, and um, the whole rest of the thing fell into place. Uh, and the, uh, the only thing there that is on the level with my eye is the large cargo ship, which was getting ready to unload over at Estes Head. <clears throat> and that's, so, the, but the, 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 you're, you're doing a sketch, so you, did you come back and do the painting later, or... That's right. I, uh, all morning I was sketching, and I prefer to do that now. I used to try to paint straight on from the beginning, but I didn't like the results as well, and so I wanted to get a sketch that um, really grabbed me, and um, I realized I loved painting in the square because it forced me away from the... Um, typical horizon line kind of horizontal um, sketch and painting that so many people do when they're out in the landscape. Um, it, I designed the whole uh, square shape, in, 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 in fact, and the afternoon I just took this great big canvas and um, looked at the sketch and painted the painting from it. I didn't grid the, the sketch and put it on exactly. I just eyeballed it, and um, I was very happy with the design. So, the, so 
the the motorboat that you're talking about is this zigzag that's going across the middle. It's kind of like a long um, stroke. It looks like maybe the 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 brush strokes are very long. That's and it has right. Like white dots. Yes, yeah. I had I had a, a fairly liquid acrylic paint, so I could dip my brush and it would run a nice long wet line out without uh, drying out and having to re-dip the brush. Um, that's the nice part of it, being quite liquid, whereas oil paints and stuff are kind of stiff, and you can't make a line like that with them. I, I see. So the, 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 um, and, and the drawing or the graphic aspect of this is, is more of an, it's not necessarily a, a total representation of the area because elements are like, you're looking down on it. It's almost like a map in a way. But um, so uh, you're, you have like this uh, graphic element, but it's the way things are appears to be like a it's more like the feeling of them and kind of a, a general sense of the shape and then like the feeling of the thing itself. Yes. It, uh, to me, the shapes were more important than the representation. And I, I didn't give a darn really if... if it really looked like what it was. At that point, especially, I just loved the way the shapes were. Um, I always find that it's easy for me to make lines, um, and painting areas is, comes harder in the end, but once the lines are in place, the others follow. And we have at the top, we have the landmass, it looks like, that's right next to the, to the boat. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, that's, that, that's an interesting shape. Is that actually Esty's head itself? Um, it, it actually is not. Esty's head was to the left off the picture. And okay. that lump in the middle is Campobello Island in Canada. But it came out looking like an angry face to me. And the painting sort of had the feeling of the anger I felt in the morning, frustration, um, I don't know why, because it was just not what I planned to start with, but then having to leave the group and go off in a huff because they picked such a smelly location. So um, it's so vigorous. Sometimes when you're angry, something very unexpected will come out. I wouldn't and recommend that for every painting, but it's a good way to... Um, Send yourself off in the trajectory. <laughs> if you can't, if you can't put your emotion, if you can't put your feelings into painting, I mean, what? Why bother, right? It's exactly. <laughs> and it looks like you have a some kind of a figure of a bridge next to the the nose. Yes, that's the international bridge um, that runs from Lubeck over to Campobello, Canada, and it's a, a vastly simplified symbol of the bridge. All right. Um, <clears throat> Well, it's a very lively and energetic painting. I do love how the the um, the ship is on a dead end, uh, dead on perspective, <laughs> coming at the viewer, and it's juxtaposed in uh, in a graphic area that is uh, it, it, it's almost it's almost like a you know a cubist mish, uh, mashup of perspective and perspective and line in the same painting. I love. We'll have all that put together in this painting. So. Oh, yes. I have no compunction at all to put something in in one dimension, one way, and then whacking the rest of it in as if it was you were looking down a helicopter. You know, I just love to do that. Well, it, as is, you're right. They call it artistic license for a reason. Nice. Um, so uh, let's move on to our second painting, which is uh, which is Enter Here, with a very strong graphic element to it. Do you want to talk about the inspiration behind Enter Here? I'd be delighted to. Um, when I was a teenager, my mother took me to France, and um, my older sister also, and my sister had um, started a wonderful social life on our travels. So in the morning, my mother insisted we go sightseeing, but in the afternoon, my sister went off with her pals, and my mother bought two sketchbooks because she knew I loved to draw. And she said, okay, we'll go back to whatever you like best this morning, and both of us will do a drawing of it. And I was 15, and those French buildings were absolutely fabulous, cockeyed, um, 
full of design elements, um, crooked lines, funny little roofs, and so on. And I taught myself perspective while I drew them. I still have the sketchbook, actually, from that era. But um, I always loved architecture. And the road as well, a lot, of, a lot of curves that you're using, like you have these architectural buildings, but also like the, the French roads are curving, which adds another element to it. Yeah, it, indeed yeah. it does, yeah. Oh, so, so you have, so you did, uh, continue, uh, how, how does that relate to uh, enter here? Okay, as you can see, there's lots of roofs and, and the like, and the entryway was a porch, which was surrounded with a trellis and um, a, tri a funny trimmed little um, evergreen tree in a pot and some f crazy flowers. And then the flag, they had a flag hung out and the wind was blowing it around. It seemed to point right in the doorway. And it was a bed and breakfast, that place. It was Weston House in Eastport. And um, I was across the street. I just loved the combination of the shapes and the way it drew you into the entrance. Um, inside the porch, they had another flower and some kind of lantern hung up and so on. And... Um, it's a very organized. It's a very organized composition. The place it seems itself itself is very organized, or has like strong compositional lines. Yes, I suppose you could say so. I I have a feeling though that um, it's more like a spiral, and it's drawing you into the doorway um, by a kind of visual suction, as it were. Okay, and the the um, we're looking at the trellis or the um, the. The kind of uh, trellis that's above the the doorway is um, these these triangular shapes that come off the roof. Is yeah, it, it had a separate roof from the house, and then beyond that, you could see the window of a neighborhood, a neighbor's house, and um, it was just a pile of geometry. Um, and there again, the two red lines in the roofs kind of made a zigzag that. Um, swung the spiral around again so that you'd go in that door. There would be no escape if you were standing there. You'd have no choice at all but to go in there. <laughs> but to enter there. And there's, there's so many, tri uh, just something I noticed compositionally about the, at the top of this painting, including the, including the flag, there's many, many triangles in here. There's, a, there's like a whole puzzle of triangles that kind of exist there. It's a, and, and the, that triangular shape is replicated throughout this composition. It all over. is. Yeah. I'm a uh, nut for diagonals. I'll tell you that. It's it, it's a fantastic it's a fantastic diagonal composition and a, and a great representation. Um, so uh, let's. Are you ready to move on to um, our third painting for the day? Sure. Okay. Uh, our third painting is Thor's Garden. Uh, Thor. Uh, this is on Monhegan Island, Maine. Okay. And Thor was a kind of a swashbuckling young man, very handsome, very tall, blonde, and he lived in a little fisherman's house right off the side of the picture. And he had this sort of weed patch. I was in a house next door, rental house with some other artists, and I looked down from the attic window, and there again the geometry was there, the diagonals were there plus some great shapes, his dory, and um, what do you know, this particular day, someone was making a garden right in the middle of the weeds, and um, he had married um, the year before and uh, had a baby, and the wife is in the, gar in the garden cultivating it right in the middle of the weed patch with her baby on one arm, and her other arm is digging away in the dirt. And the um, the lines all through the painting, especially the red on the left, is our paths through the weeds. Thor's <laughs> table saw is down on the lower left, and he or one of his pigtailed friends is heading up the path and um, with his mind on something else. I don't know what, but... Um, the domestication of the property amused me. Um, the baby carrots on the upper right, somebody's lawn chair, and the blue thing in the upper left is actually 
the bottom of somebody's summer house uh, um, porch. Okay. So um, it was just a collection of stuff that I wanted to bring together somehow, some of it quite incongruous. That's what tickled me about it, I guess. And and she's kind of, so uh, his wife is squatting in the center with a child, and she's gardening, so she's creating this kind of uh, organized or organized world within this more chaotic, organic world. That's yes, cool. indeed she is, yeah. Uh, the, it's a, it, I, I love the kind of sen- uh, the feeling of centeredness and and like the mother and child combination being in this what almost to me looks like a protected space in the middle or like a space that she's creating that's protect protected from the well it certainly turned out that way and of course there's an awful lot of medieval paintings that have. Um, Mary and the Christ child right in the middle, and that wasn't really my intention, but it turned out that way. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I, I think it definitely, I, I think it definitely works with, the, the, with with how each thing is surrounding, like the it's a circular squares are essentially you know a circular composition. So the 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 sense of two separate worlds and one world surrounding the other and inform and, and informing that world I think really comes through. Yes, and, I I loved painting in the square for a long time, several years. That was all I did at, uh, for that reason. The the feeling also of a spiral of getting drawn into the middle or something like that, and uh, diagonals leading you on. Um, the sea is on the upper right. Uh, Sort of zigzagging away, and um, oh, it was a great place. The the, the 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 uh, the dory has this marvelous 3D effect with color, um, where the you can see the seat kind of sitting in the do- dories. For those who don't know, are the the boats that people use to get to their real to their lobster boat or whatever. So they they just keep this docked on the shore, and then when it's time to go to work, you jump in the dory and row your way out to the to the to the lobster boat, and you moor your dory there. Uh, the dory has quite a history, too. It used to be when they fished on the Grand Banks from uh, sail, big sailboats, fishing boats, they had a bunch of, of that particular kind of uh, small boat for the fishermen to go out, and they would harpoon whales from dories because they were extremely um, steady in the water. They wouldn't tip over, even though they look a little bit knife-like. Uh, they were wonderful in the water, good in high waves and everything else. That's that's kind of incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, it definitely looks like a very solid vessel in this painting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's our that's our final uh, that's our third painting, uh, the words garden from Monhegan Island, and we have today with us uh, Diana Young, the main painter, who is uh, talking about her, who has been talking about her work, and. Uh, Thank you for joining us on the very first Dialogue Box, and we'll, I'm certain we're going to have you back because you have so many fabulous paintings to talk about. Uh, but thanks again for joining us for the very first. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, you have a great day. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, bye.